You're in for a treat today, let me tell you. Some research had to be done, and so I asked all of you on Instagram to please tell me who your book crush is. If you have more than one, totally fine, just tell me. I got some answers. I am disappointed in some of you, I am scared for some of you, and some of you I just made me feel really seen. So what we're gonna do today, go through your crushes with you, see who is number one, because we're gonna rank them together. Out of the people, there's a list, I think there's 49, there's either 46 or 49 of them who got seven or more votes. This list together, people who got seven or more votes, all of their total votes equal a little over 800. Of course, way more than 800 of you guys voted. I'm just taking your top 40, six, 49, whatever it is. After that data is in uh, and you see what you've done, you've really snubbed some people. Some of these are just so damn questionable. You've now given me very valuable data. Okay, you've sold your data to me for free. Thank you. And then we're gonna do some predictive modeling. See what really makes the ideal crush. What really makes <laughs> the ideal book character. What book character is the most crushable? What makes a book character most likely to be crushed upon? Before we get into your personalized tier ranking of book crushes, literary crushes. I said they could be from any book, any genre, anyone. They could be as weird as you would like to make it. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm not here to call anyone out by name, but you know who you are. I do have a bone to pick with some of you because we have some people, some characters who only got one vote each. I can't stand it. I think they deserve better. I think they should have been so much higher and I just need to show you them. I need to show you what you've done. I need to show you who you've snubbed. How dare you, frankly. <gasps> How do I screen record? Just like that, baby. Here are the people who didn't even make it into a category, okay? First of all, Pippin. Pippin from Lord of the Rings. Are you kidding me? He's an angel. He is perfect. He is so cute. He has a heart of gold. His character arc is phenomenal and only one person, only one person out there voted for Pippin and might I add, no one voted for Mary. okay? Who? I was kind of in love with. Also, coming in with one vote only, Mr. Tomnus. God, how could you do this to me? Mr. Tomnus, only one person, only one person voted for Mr. Tomnus from the Chronicles of Narnia. However, the next character, I'm just like, I'm appalled. I'm absolutely appalled. I'm worried and I'm frightened. Arwen, how dare you? And then some personal faves that I'm just upset only got one vote. Yeah, it's Richard III. <laughs> I think after you read Richard III by Shakespeare, you would vote for him. Maybe. Possibly. He only got one vote. Lucy Westenra from Dracula only got one vote. Unacceptable, do better. Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon. This was my whole childhood. And finally, the other one that I'm a little bit personally upset about, Horatio. Horatio from Hamlet only got one vote. He's a catch. He's a darn catch, and he would treat you right. He would treat you right. Okay, that's it. I just wanted to air my grievances with you. Next, we have the category of shame, okay? I am here to shame some people because I think you need it. I am worried for you. Is this a cry for help? Someone voted for Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Girls, no. Someone also voted for Moby Dick, the whale. Are you aware that Moby Dick is the whale? I don't know. I think the poor whale's been through enough. Leave him alone. Okay, someone also voted for Pennywise, the clown, from It. Actually. No. No. Someone voted for Young Moses from the Bible. I get it. I get it. Have you seen Prince of Egypt? Someone voted for Aslan from the Chronicles of Narnia. I also get it. I also get it. I do want to give a little caveat, obviously, before we go into tier ranking all of the book crushes who did make it into the upper echelons of crush society. Uh, obviously, when you read a book, there are as many different versions, physical versions, physical appearances of that character as there are people who read him. So obviously, the pictures that I chose, this is just kind of the best that I could do. It's so cool because when you read a book, you can have a totally different opinion of the character, totally different idea in your mind of how that person looks based on how you interpret the author's description of them, physical description, emotional description, um, and it's very, very, very cool. These people in your mind could look a thousand percent different, and that's what's cool about book crushes because hopefully most of the time you are crushing on something more than just their looks because when you read a book, 
there's no visual picture except the one that you're making in your in your head. With that being said, here is our spread of, let's face it, men. One woman, one, one, one woman made it onto the list. There is a plethora, a bounty of wonderful book crushes that you could have on women and only one of them made it onto this list, which we'll get to. Also something you'll notice, if you squint, actually you don't even really need to squint. They all kind of look the same. Obviously keep in mind the caveat that these representations are 100% totally not, I'm assuming what is going on in your mind when you think of the character or when you read a book. However, something that is obvious is that they're pretty much all white dudes. Here are the tiers. Let's get into it. Here are the tiers. Okay, so on the bottom, we have people who only got one to seven votes. So this is the lowest category. Actually, it shouldn't even be a one. Let me just change that. It should just be you got a minimum of seven votes because that was the range that I cut it off at, okay? The next category going up the crushing ladder, this person got eight to 15 votes. Next category, 16 to 20 votes for that character. Uh, getting into the upper echelons of the infatuation station, we have 21 to 30 votes. 31 to 40 votes is one of the highest categories and the highest category is over 80 votes for a single book character, Crush. These are all in random order, but let's get started. Crush number one is Rizuma Kid from Crime and Punishment. Oh boy. I have read Crime and Punishment. It's been a long time. I'm gonna ignore those of you who voted for Raskolnikov and we're gonna go with Raskolnikov's foil because this character is so nice, so fun, so witty, so clever, and it's obvious why so many people voted for this dude. Where does he fall in the ranking? He sadly only gets the second category. Honestly, I'm surprised that he made it all the way up though into the top 800 votes. So that's still pretty good. Also in the poll, I obviously didn't ask you guys to explain why you chose this book character. So now is your chance. If you are one of the people who voted for Zumakin or any of these other characters, please, please, if you want to expose yourself, obviously just a open invitation to in the comments below. And you can find your crush buddies down there as well. The next bookish crush is Zayden from Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is a very recent release. I personally have not read it. I know that Fourth Wing is like taking over book talk by storm and Zayden, first of all, awful name. I'm sorry. I have no idea who this guy is. I think he rides dragons. I know he has a cool scar. It looks like he's got tattoos. Also, this lovely art is by Shauna the author. Um, if you want to check out her art, you can. And this is Zayden. So I don't know. Why do you guys like this dude? Zayden is also going into the category with Rizuma, coming in at nine votes as well. So not really too, too popular, but he did make it all the way up here as well. Okay. The next one, dear God, it's Mr. Knightley from Emma. Um, no surprise to me. So many people love Mr. Knightley and the chokehold that Jane Austen has on all of you is it's something special we should do whole video essays dedicated to these men so mr knightley from emma um he's funny he tells it like it is and he's just cute and on top of that deep down he is just a big teddy bear so mr knightley is going into the third place third place category he has 23 votes so 23 of you voted for mr knightley um, well deserved. The next bookish crush that you guys voted for is Jem Carstairs, who I believe is from the Immortal Instruments. The Immortal? Is it Immortal Instruments? Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. He is a shadow hunter. First of all, this is the image from the book cover and this is so cursed. Like this looks so bad. I haven't read these books. I have no idea who he is. I have no idea what he does. He, he's got a cane, a shiny cane. Jem sadly also goes into fifth place. He's not like uber popular, but he's down there. Next, we have a huge bookish crush. Um, this one was kind of ridiculous. It is none other than Kaz Brecker from Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Okay, let's discuss. So, so many of you voted for Kaz Brecker. I didn't really love Six of Crows, but I was a little bit interested in the character of Kaz Brecker in the book. He has a very interesting story. He has a cool backstory. He's a very cool character. Would I say that I was really crushing on him? No, not really. He's extremely emotionally unavailable, although he does go through a pretty cool character arc. He grows, 
he learns. Um, he's extremely lethal. He is extremely rich. And then the Shadow and Bone TV show came out on Netflix and I was really excited to see who they cast. Unfortunately in the show he kind of opened his mouth and acted and I just found his acting really unbelievable so much so that it like put me off and like I didn't like Kaz Brecker anymore and I thought it was a little bit cringy. Sadly for me, this crush has sailed. For you guys, no, no, no. Kaz Brecker is almost in the second category, but he is also in league with Mr. Knightley, which like, I feel like that's a fair comparison. Kaz Brecker got 30 votes. Jumping to one of the most popular book crushes next, we have none other than Peta, Peta Malark from The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Peta does not do it for me. Peta is not a fave. When I read The Hunger Games, Peta was not it for me. Someone else was, who is also on this list, who we'll get to. He's just really a perfect guy. He's so nice. He's so caring. Um, he's just very true to himself. He's very earnest, definitely golden retriever type, very loyal, very kind. He likes to bait and he is also pretty smart and like charismatic. But you guys, on the other hand, are absolutely feral for, for PETA. He goes into second place. PETA comes in with 39 votes. After PETA, we actually have a character who is pretty similar to him, I want to say, especially in looks, and that is Nick Nelson from Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I don't crush on anyone in these graphic novels. I think the Heartstopper graphic novels are so sweet, so wholesome, and it is totally a story that I just want to look into from the outside in, like I'm peering into a, a little window of wholesomeness and happiness. And he also goes into the fifth category. Next up, I was surprised. I was delighted and surprised to see that this character made it onto the list of the top, the top crushes, and that is none other than Harry. Harry. I can't believe he made it. I'm so happy. I love Harry. Like, I think he's just one of those characters that I just, I just love, and I just want good things only for him, and I just want him to be happy, and he suffers so much, and he goes through so much. I think Daniel Radcliffe has 100% contributed to the reason why he's on here. He's just, he's just simply wonderful. Harry Potter did make it onto this list, but sadly he really just squeaked through because you guys put him in the bottom tier. I don't think he deserves the bottom tier. I think that's a bit, I think that's a bit rude. I think that's a bad choice. I think more people should have voted for him. This next dude absolutely knocked it out of the park. Good pick, good pick guys. It is Gilbert Blythe from Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Thank you. I'm so happy he's here. Standing character, really great guy all around fun wonderful also very caring and very like just deep sympathetic i feel like gilbert is maybe just a slightly more mischievous version of Peta. i don't know but you guys put gilbert in second place nicely done nicely done for book boyfriends we have mr thornton from north and south by elizabeth gaskell i have not read north and south i've never read any of gaskell i didn't know this character existed until you popped him onto this list so i'm very surprised who is he what is his story why is he here? I didn't really want to look it up too, too much for fear of spoiling myself for the book, but regardless, this guy is here. Surprisingly, he gets fifth place, so he must be doing something right. What is he doing right? Why are the ladies obsessed with this man? <laughs> Next up is a crush that I feel like I didn't really get until I kind of sat down and thought about it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. It's Atticus Finch. It's Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. When Carolyn told me that he was like her biggest book crush in high school, I was flabbergasted. Now that I'm looking at these photos, which again is obviously from a movie adaptation, he's just like a stand-up guy. And on top of that, look at the suit. Look at the glasses. You guys liked him so much that once again, you've put him into this category. Atticus got 11 votes. Next up is someone that I find is just incredibly mediocre. Perhaps it's because I haven't read the book and I've only seen the movie adaptation, but the next bookish crush that you listed is Lori from Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I don't get it. And this one is a hard pass for me. I really don't understand. I think he's really incredibly mediocre. On the other hand, love Mr. Lawrence and you put him in fourth place. Lori got 20 votes, 20. Maybe I have to read the book to truly understand. <laughs> next up we have Aaron Warner. So I've chosen a picture of Hans Christian Andersen. Oh my god, Hans Christian Andersen. <laughs> Hayden Christensen. Clearly you can tell where I would rank this person. Hayden Christensen as Aaron Warner because TikTok has collectively decided that if there's ever an adaptation made, Hayden Christensen has to be the one to play Warner, which I'm not complaining about. So there's just something, 
there's just something about the language I think of it all which is very interesting because Shatter Me is not a series that I would really praise on its use of language and writing and words. You guys decided that he belongs right next to Lori uh, in fourth place. Warner came in with 18 votes which is good. Would have gone in first place for me but that's fine. What god did you bribe for a face like that? I don't know. Okay we have Mr. Rochester. I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one, guys. Are we sure? Are we like 100% sure? Because when I read Jane Eyre, I was just kind of like, you're kind of a creep. You're kind of mean. And like, I don't think his redemption arc is really that deserved. I think I straight up hate Mr. Rochester. Like, are we really gonna forgive the attic? You're really gonna forgive the attic? For what? To me, uh, unforgivable. Mr. Rochester, no, no, no. Um. I'm upset because you guys have put him in third place. Next up, we have Gansey from The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I read The Raven Boys for the first time last year. First of all, 10 out of 10 book. Fantastic book. I haven't gotten, I think, as far as I would need to be in the series as of right now to develop a crush on Gansey. Currently, I love Adam. I just love Adam's character. I'm assuming that Gansey is really going to start to shine in the later books. Gansey is a very rich young man who is like trying his best to honestly recognize his privilege and be like, okay, I want to stop treating people like garbage or I want to understand that there are ways of life other than my very rich privileged upbringing because he goes to like a very expensive boarding school. His family is very rich um, and he starts to hang out with this girl who's obviously not from the same wealth also on a hunt he's very driven i don't know he's just very cool he has an obsession he has stuff he's gonna go after but at the same time he is honestly trying his best to be very thoughtful and kind you guys decided that gansey or richard gansey the third goes into almost the bottom category eh, i honestly think he deserves to be higher next up we have finnick finnick from the hunger games this is it this was, this was my Hunger Games man. This was the Hunger Games man for me. The way that I sobbed my whole soul out at Mockingjay, absolutely lost it. I think he is just, he's so charming. He's so fluid. He's so cool. I think he's so feminine. I think he's so masculine. I think he's so cool. He's so smart. He's so funny, but he's also so tragic and it's so sad. And I just love him. I love Finnick. You guys decided that Finnick goes in fourth place which is honestly fine. We have another character from a book I haven't read. That's Will Herondale. This guy got a ton of votes, again, from the Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. Based on this fan art by Sylvie Art, I would say, yeah, he would probably be my type. I mean, he's reading. Who is he? What is his story? I would love to do a reading vlog on this channel with Cassandra Clare's novels because I've only read City of Bones? City of Bones? A long long time ago let me know if you would like to see that but will herondale will herondale goes into third place with 26 votes as your book boyfriend it's the way that everyone in the third tier is all dressed the exact same way next up we have a character that like i i don't understand i just was not at the right place at the right time for this to happen but um damn it's percy jackson First of all, this is not a good visual representation because what the hell is that haircut? I didn't get to read these books as a kid. I wasn't involved with a movie as a kid. And Percy Jackson just doesn't really appeal to me now in any way, shape, or form. I think for a lot of people, this is an attachment formed very early on. I think Percy is probably just a little sweet cinnamon roll is what I've heard. I have read the first two books, but I read them in university, so wasn't really to attach them. I didn't have the chance to develop that crush, but... 29 of you did. Mr. Jackson also goes into the third tier. Pretty good. Pretty good. Son of Poseidon. Son of Poseidon. Next up, we have another Harry Potter character, and that is Draco Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. I love you. Where did you guys put him? You guys decided that Draco belongs in the fourth category. Um, okay, this is really starting to spook me. Also, if you ignore Lori, everyone in the fourth category is starting to look the same. I think the fourth tier is where I live, if we discount Lori. I just think he's also a very complex character. Next up, we have Andre, Prince Andre Bolkonski from War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Um, eh, I don't think he's like an outstanding character. 
I, I think, was a lot more interested in Pierre's character in War and Peace. Andre was just a little bit too haughty for me, and not like haughty, like haughty. Andre only got 12 votes, so he again is going in. Almost the bottom. This is one you guys have probably all been waiting for. I was honestly expecting this character to get a thousand fold more votes. Maybe it's because my audience isn't really in love with the series. I'm not sure. I thought this character was going to be like almost number one. And that is recent from Akatar by Sarah J. Mass, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I feel like recent, especially in recent years and especially now, book talk is becoming such a huge thing. I feel like he is the quintessential book boyfriend. I read A Court of Mist and Fury a couple of years ago and I was like, okay, like recent's cool. I could have like a sizable crush on this man, but it wasn't like, it wasn't a full-blown obsession. I honestly was expecting a little bit more from his character. The way that people are obsessed with this man is, is a little is a little scary honestly with that being said reason doesn't even make it into the second category he is still in the third category coming in at 29 votes not what i was expecting i was expecting him to be in the first category honestly very interesting next up we have a newcomer so the fact that this book is pretty recently released kind of speaks volumes about how much attention this book boy is getting and that is Jax from uh, Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which I have on my shelves and which I really want to read. Um, and this is a wonderful rendition from Tabby's Art. Jax got 13 votes, so he goes into this category down here as well. Next up, <laughs> it's The Phantom from The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Lehu. I knew I wasn't the only one out there. What murder? Honestly, Phantom of the Opera got 10 votes. <laughs> So he also goes in that bottom category. This next character, I am so like, <laughs> I'm having a laugh attack over this right now. I just think it's so funny the way that Carolyn and I assigned the first book of Game of Tomes as the Count of Monte Cristo. And then I put out this poll in the middle of so many of you reading the, Mon the Count of Monte Cristo. And lo and behold, Edmund Dantes shows up. Oh my God. I did not think that I was gonna fall in love reading the large ass tome that is the count of monte cristo alas i would do anything for edmund dantes crimes i would commit crimes i was laughing my ass off at the amount of votes that the count of monte cristo was getting i just think it's hilarious if you haven't read the count of monte cristo do it if you're scared by how big it is i don't know you're just gonna fall in love with this man i appreciate these votes you guys decided to put the count of monte cristo in the second category you put him in the second category i don't know why this is so damn funny to me he came in at 31 votes you have like extremely popular people like recent kaz brecker aaron warner draco malfoy but what the girls really want is the count of monte cristo the truth will out next up we have nikolai lansov from king of scars by lee bardugo again i haven't read this book nikolai unfortunately doesn't really get a ton of votes he goes in this last category there although these people didn't get the top votes we have so many people from sarah j mass's books making it onto like the full list of votes which maybe i'll make another video with asriel from akatar as well makes it onto the short list I had a huge crush on Asriel. It wasn't recent that I was really interested in. I loved Asriel. He's just so, I don't know, he's just so quiet and so nice. If you don't know, these men are all fey and they all have bat wings. So girls just want Batman. Girls just want the man bat. Asriel also goes in this bottom category here. So honestly, I think he deserves to be a little bit higher. Is Levin, Constantine Levin from Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Thank you. Levin is such a wonderful character. Thank you for putting him on this list. You guys decided that he goes into the fourth category, which like, okay. Okay, he's just so pure. He just wants to farm. He just wants to be a good person. So he got 20 votes. We have an OG that I was kind of hoping some of us might have outgrown. Some of us didn't, that's okay. It's Edward Cullen from Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. For me, this is just not a thing anymore. When I read Twilight back in the day, I was team Edward, but it's, it's, it's gone. That spark is extinguished now. The only vampire to make it onto our list goes into, we're running out of room. He also goes 
into the the lower tier which like that's fine the next one is a little bit questionable but i guess i kind of see it severus snape a decent amount of people voted for severus snape as your book crush he also goes into the bottom tier he didn't get that many votes uh he also got seven votes so he is down there very funny i was not really expecting sever snape to make it onto the list you will also notice probably at this point that the top category still remains empty the next bookish crush is vronsky from anna karenina um i think for me personally reading the book this does not make any sense i did not get this sense there was no infatuation there no attraction there for me i think he's just kind of a subpar person I think what is really doing the heavy lifting here is the adaptation because this is a work of art. Uh, Vronsky and Anna Karenina is, is not a work of art. Vronsky also gets 11 votes, so he goes into category 5. Cardin Greenbrier <laughs> from um, that one book. From that one book. Oh, it's something about Faye. Oh my god. It's by Holly Black. I thought Cardin was okay. Cardin is just kind of a huge bully, but he has a tail. So maybe in your mind that equals out. Cardin got a lot of votes. I can't say I really understand him getting this many votes, but he goes in the third tier. He goes in the third tier up there with our other fame man. Next crush is Howl and Someone Wants Up from Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Good choice. Solid choice. I understand. Again, I think it might be influenced a lot by the film, but doesn't matter. Howl is a great choice. And Howl, very happily, also goes into tier 3 with 21 votes. Next up, we have Jamie... Oh my god, I almost said Jamie Lannister. Why isn't he on the list? Why isn't Jamie Lannister on the list? I thought there would be more Game of Thrones characters, but this is Jamie from Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. I have read the first Outlander book. Um, it was alright. I'm not 100% obsessed with Jamie. He's pretty mediocre to me, honestly. He's just okay. I'm not really, I'm not really digging it. Jamie actually goes in the bottom tier. Uh, he is in the last tier. After Jamie, we have a character from The Secret History. We have Henry Winter from The Secret History by Donna Tart. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I read The Secret History, I was also a fan of Henry Winter. His last name's Winter. He knows ancient Greek. That's instant smash. I'm sorry. This man is apparently godly smart. Oh, you put him decently high up. He goes in the fourth category. There he is. I'm not saying he's a good person, but <laughs> this one I'm a little surprised about, honestly. We have Sirius Black from Harry Potter. I don't really truly understand. I can't say honestly that I really truly understand, but um, I'm very curious to see what you have to say in the comments section. Can I put you down? Would that be okay? Sirius Black made it into the fifth category. So we're just straight up throwing people in here now. We have Connell from Normal People by Sally Rooney. I haven't read this one, probably gonna be reading this book soon. Connell also got 12 votes from you, so he goes into this category <laughs> that is getting so full. This one, I'm upset that he didn't get more. I am upset that he didn't get more. We have Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Aragorn got a sad 15 votes. I'm upset. I think, can I vote for him? Can I, can I cast my vote? I'm gonna cast my vote and I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him in the fourth because I honestly can't stand to see him in in the fifth. I won't I won't do it. I can't do it. I voted. That is my one vote. Then we have Heathcliff from Wuthering Heights. Um nine people voted for Heathcliff. Like his speeches really bump him up. His behavior should probably put him in the bottom tier. This is just getting more and more out of control. Finally, we have our one woman, our one singular woman who made it onto the list and god oh my god it's inej it's inej from six of crows oh my god i mean thank god it's her sick ass character wonderful character my only question is why is she not higher because inej as well only got nine votes which puts her in the fifth tier which is clearly unacceptable the next crush is uh ivan ivan it just hurts you know it really does just hurt 
This character is from The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. My little sweet rainbow of sunshine, really. He's just going through it. You gave him 11 votes, 11 people out there understand. This is getting out of hand. This is getting out of hand. I probably should have changed the tears, but it's too late now. After Ivan, we have Faramir from Lord of the Rings. Probably the biggest crush on Faramir. The biggest consistent crush, you know what I mean? Because I feel like your Lord of the Rings split kind of changes over time. Like when I feel like you're really young, it's Legolas and you're like, oh my god. But at the same time, Faramir for me was like constant, constant and steady. And now obviously it's Aragorn, but Faramir, I think deep in my heart. I think it's Faramir. Faramir got nine of your votes. Faramir got nine of your votes. Then we have another professor, and that is Professor Lupin. Professor Lupin also got nine votes. The next one I would give you a side eye, but that would mean I would also be giving myself a side eye because some people, I was not expecting this, some people voted for the creature. Some people voted for Frankenstein's creature, for Frankenstein's monster, for Victor's creation. Um, yeah. Enough so that more people, more people have a crush on Frankenstein's creation than they have on people like Jon Snow, Sherlock Holmes, Geralt of Rivia, Hamlet. More people have a crush on Frankenstein's creature than they do on like Lestat or something. However, he does go in the bottom tier because he got seven votes, but I think the creature would treat you right. I think he would treat you right. Like, I think he does have... A heart of gold which unfortunately just gets smothered and crushed by the world but he's just a sweetheart and he reads he reads his favorite book is paradise lost and he's tall he's eight feet tall okay, next up we have another man from a book i haven't read and that is ravi from a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson if i'm not mistaken i have not read the series i've not read this book ravi got eight votes so he also goes into the oh my god the fifth category is out of hand next up we have cassian as well from akatar by sarah j mass cassian i guess is our least preferred bat boy i get it he's just kind of a dude bro and i'm not really into it shockingly seven foot tall bat boy chiseled sculpted whatever goes in the same category as frankenstein's monster and they say it looks matter I mean, they obviously do, but I'm just, I'm proud of us. I'm proud that we've got here. I'm proud that this is a defining moment for us. And I advocate for Frankenstein's monster. I advocate for love for the creature. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Let's admit it, there's probably someone that you have been waiting for since you clicked on this video. You'll notice that the top roster remains untouched. There's no one there. There's no one taking the over 80 vote spot. But there is someone who is very clearly not on this list who is about to be. I was expecting this, but I wasn't expecting him to win by such a monumental landslide. The last person that we need to place is obviously Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is insane. This needs to be studied and like it has been studied. There's countless video essays on this. I understand. I think he's a good character. You already know where he's going, but do you know how many votes he got? Out of the over 800 most popular votes, Mr. Darcy got 98. Darcy got 98 votes. He is absolutely in a tier of his own. He's in a land of his own. He's in a rank of his own. If you were one of those 98 people, and counting probably. What is it? Maybe it's his ability to evolve, but he's also very witty, he's very sassy, he's not afraid to dish it out. I think he's complicated, he's sensitive, but he also has a lot going on. Mr. Darcy is your most voted for book crush. I think a lot of these, you can kind of look at how these crushes treat others or treat their significant other. I think because of the rise of a lot of certain tropes in romance books and especially fantasy romances, especially the trend of enemies to lovers and rivals to lovers, I was expecting a lot more toxicity and obviously we do not have to dive deep into this at all. I mean this is so much fun, this is just for fun, but honestly seeing that like the top people that you're voting for are Mr. Darcy, Peter Mellark, and Gilbert Blythe, and the Count of Monte Cristo. I mean, yeah, he's a murderer, but he's a gentleman. It's nice, it's refreshing. Like these are probably the nicest people on the list and they ranked the highest. I am now gonna burst your bubble and I'm imagining that a lot of you are either imagining this actor playing Darcy or an actor from different adaptations. Um, canonically and historically, uh, this is not what 
Darcy looks like. I'm assuming a lot of us are just trying to ignore what he would have actually looked like in Jane Austen's novel, but then of course maybe we aren't thinking about that at all, and maybe you just have a crush on like the character, like the actual character of the person, which is admirable. However, if you're in love with Matthew McFadden, I'm, I'm about to burst your bubble because this is who you voted as your number one book crush. George Washington? No. Mr. Darcy. This is what historians have put out as the most accurate physical appearance of Mr. Darcy, which is just a little heartbreaking. This is your heart's desire. This is our final tier list. It's not what I would have done, but I'm honestly fine with it. I'm not mad about it. I think I can say that I firmly sit in category four. That is the table that I would sit myself at and be quite happy about. However, there remains work to be done. It's time to read the data or misread the data because I'm not a data uh, scientist. That's, that's about to be abundantly clear. Basically, what we're trying to predict is if you read a book and there was a character in it, what is the likelihood of you crushing on them? And more than that, why? What What is it about them? Obviously, a lot of characters from our tier list had powers of some sort. They weren't solely human. So does having magical abilities and magical powers curry that much favor with the populace. Not really, which is kind of shocking. The normal dudes won out with 66% of your vote. If you're a magic man, you know, if you've got an assortment of magical powers, you only got 34%. However, if you were a magic, magical being, what magical being would be the best to be? Okay, so coming in at this small little itty bitty baby part of the pie right here, this little slice, 5%, Vampires. It doesn't pay to drink blood. Okay, doesn't pay off. Coming in at 24%, this is like the miscellaneous slice of the pie because obviously we have people on our list like Shadow Hunters. We had people like Gansey from the Raven Boys who obviously has something going on connected to Welsh mythology. So they got 24%. But coming in at 29%, wizards. You guys like wizards. Cool. I mean, in this big, big chunk of pie at 42%, we have fae, okay? We have the fae. The fae have taken over. I guess it's not cool to call them elves anymore, but we have people like Recent, Cassian, Asriel, Cardin. It does, it does pay off to be a little dude with pointy ears. Or I guess tall dude, because they're all kind of very tall, but... Anyway, next thing I wanted to look at was just a little basic. It's just your hair color, not really your hairstyle. We're gonna take a look at people's hair because I feel like hair color in novels is one of the first things that you start to imagine about a person. Like once I know the color of a person's hair in a book, I can get a much better picture of them. If you're balding, if you straight up don't have any hair or that hair is almost all gone, you still got 17 votes. You got 2% of my audience's votes of the popular vote. Let it grow and let it go. Don't worry about hair loss, okay? Because you're not losing out on the polls. If you're a character in a novel and your hair slash like mostly physical description is just unspecified, you do get more votes. The author who falls most into this category of the popular votes list is actually Jane Austen. Jane Austen is very famous for not really describing the physical appearances, the visuals of her characters. People like Darcy, Mr. Knightley, I think any of them if I'm mistaken, certainly not Darcy or Knightley. They don't really have very much physical description given to them, their character really speaks for them. Like Darcy's hair in the book, we don't know. It's never mentioned. So if you're unspecified, if you're a mystery, if you're literally not really described that much, we don't care. If you are a blondie, the stocks go up. The stock market is rising for you. If you're blonde, you got 22%. We have a clear winner for hair color. Okay, so if you have dark hair, you got 57% of the popular vote. So, so far, what are your stats saying? You just want a normal dude, no magical abilities, just a straight up normal mortal, hopefully, man with dark hair. It's not a big ask, you're doing fine. I, I wanted to explore a little bit more. So I started to look at, out of all of the characters that you guys listed who had dark hair, what else did they have in common? And we found some things. There were some things to be found. A lot of people on this list who had dark hair also had scars. A lot of them were also rich. A lot of them were also tall. However, I wanted to find out like, what is the best wombo combo? If you have dark hair, great. You're set up for success as a bookish character. If you have dark hair and you're scarred, are you more set up to be crushed upon than someone who has dark hair and you're rich? Or if you're just rich, does your stock 
rise higher than someone who is tall. Let me explain to you what you are seeing here. All of these categories that you see, they all have dark hair. So just all already imagine that the character that I'm trying to paint a picture of, they already all have dark hair. So if you have dark hair and you're scarred, you get nine votes. If you have dark hair and you're tall and you're scarred, you also get nine votes. If you have a scar, that scar is going to carry just as much weight as having a scar and being tall. Scars seem to be where it's at. However, if you are scarred, but you're also rich, if you're scarred and rich and you have dark hair, that's a little bit better. Being rich and scarred is better than being tall and scarred, okay? However, something a little bit better than being rich and scarred or tall and scarred. And that is straight up just tall. However, if you're rich and tall, discount the scarring even better. However, you get 99 of the dark haired character crushes votes if you're straight up just rich. I don't make the rules, you did. However, that was looking like it might have been the best combo just having dark hair and being rich. However, you guys want it all. You guys straight up just want it all. The best combo deal if you are a dark haired character and probably any bookish love interest or any bookish character that could be crushed upon. Authors, I'm giving you free data here. Is to have both dark hair, be rich, be scarred, and be tall. So far, ideal bookish crush. Normal ass person with dark hair. Bonus points get added on if you're rich, if you have a scar, and if you're tall. Something you'll probably also have noticed with our big list, our big spread of bookish characters, is that not a lot of them are really from our time period. Not a lot of the crushes are contemporary. Let me show you, let me show you the, the badly done line graph. I just want to say if you're a stats person, if you're a statistician, don't watch this video. And if you do watch this video, don't get mad at me. So unnecessary line graph number one. The data is conclusive. Let's just for a hot second ignore this point down here because this is the 18th century. There's only one character from the 18th century. We don't want 18th century dudes. We know the 18th century, it's out. You know what's really hot and in? The 19th century. I just stand over this data point. As you can see, as time progresses, crushability decreases. From the 20th century, people like Gilbert Blythe, you still got 125 votes. If you're from the 21st century, if you are a modern man, modern Prometheus, you got 75 votes, so like you're not doing very well. I'm feeling like a lot of the crushability of these characters is, is like the escapism of it all, and a lot of that escapism is probably also centered around the desire to escape your own time period for something else. However, it doesn't even get better if we go into the future. What the girls want? Period piece papas. We're getting closer and closer to the ideal character. Let's now zone in on really niche things just to see if any of these stick. I've seen a lot of people online accusing people who crush on certain book characters of just being in love with absolute psychopaths, ignoring all of the red flags. First of all, let me remind you, it's just fiction. It's, it's simply just fiction. It's not real. Let's test that data anyway. If you are a straight up psychopath, do your chances of getting more votes to become president of the crushability club increase. No, they don't. They actually go down. Unhingedness brings in less votes, okay? It's not bringing in the bread. You guys want people who are kind of mentally sound and are an average nice dude. Let's dive deeper. There were a couple people on the list who I was like, oh, that could be a thing. Are you more likely to have a crush on a character who has fought Napoleon or has been involved with potentially fighting Napoleon in some way or been accused of fighting Napoleon or not fighting Napoleon? Does Napoleon, does Emperor Napoleon have anything to do? Is he manipulating the votes? The answer is no. It's actually better if you didn't fight Napoleon. I see you, you guys like the Republic. A lot of these people uh, are straight up criminals. A lot of these people are criminals. Is it better for you to be a criminal in the eyes of my audience? Not really. However, 36% of them are still gonna vote for you. And that can be anything of your choosing, okay? From petty crime to uh, mass murder. They're not picky. There's gotta be one secret ingredient uniting all of these people that you're crushing upon. I'm like, there's gotta be one thing. It didn't hit me until I sat down and I just stared at are spread. And I looked at them all and I was like, what do you all have in common? I don't know if you figured it out, but I cracked it wide open. I know exactly 
what you want. Secret hidden ingredient that like immediately determines if you're gonna have a crush on a character in a book or not is ruffles. It's straight up just ruffles. Like it's just wearing a ruffly shirt. That's all you have to do and people will go absolutely feral for you. Cravats, okay? Do you wear cravats? This is the secret weapon. This is the straight up secret weapon. This is the common factor. This is the X factor. This is you if you don't wear ruffles, if you don't wear ties, if you don't wear that cravat that maybe you don't have yet, but after this video, maybe you're gonna go out and buy because if you do, 84% of my audience will be head over heels for you if you wear ruffles. It's as simple as that. It's a damn shirt. What am I reading here? There's a bit of refinement. There's a bit of distance. There's a bit of mystery. It's just charming. It's elegant. It's just a little bit more romanticism. I think it coincides with this image of someone who's hopefully gonna treat you right. Someone who is a little bit more well-mannered. And on top of that, it's just so artful. It's so beautiful. It's so classical. It really all comes back to the classics of it all. Based on all this data, based on all this research that I've compiled, I determined who is your ideal man? Who is your ideal book crush? I just wanted someone who would encapsulate as many of your votes as possible. And I think I've got it, like I've cracked the code. I'm now gonna introduce you to your ideal book crush. It's Captain Hook, it's Captain Hook. It's Captain James Hook from Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This is the archetype. This is the ideal. Like you don't get any better than this. Look, dark hair. The ruffles abound. The ruffles abound. He's a pirate. He's committed crimes. So we got the 36% of you that prefer crimes. The cravat, the ruffles, the long sleeves, the military coat. He's very rich. He is the richest pirate in the seas, apparently. He's canonically very tall dark hair and he is a lot more scarred than just his missing hand would suggest because in the book peter pan he does go through the stomach of the crocodile who swallows him and because of all the stomach acids in the crocodile stomach his face becomes severely disfigured which isn't usually shown but if you read the book he's very very scarred so i got all of you i've got everything that you want yes he's not technically from the 19th century peter pan was written early 1900s he doesn't have it in neverland where like time doesn't really exist. So that represents almost an ultimate escapism from time, which is what I kind of interpreted your century preference as anyway. So like, he's got it all. He's got all the stops. If you made it to the end of the video, leave me a gold coin, but also tell me if this is true. Like, do you have a crush on Captain Hook or not? And obviously it doesn't have to be this iteration, just in general, okay? You can have the once upon a time man. That checked out for me. I've confronted you with your demons today. I've confronted you with Captain Hook. I hope you enjoyed this video. Can I wait to do more weird surveys and weird misrepresentations of data with you like this in the future? Thank you for participating. Ciao.